Let's talk about incredible archaeological discoveries. Let's talk about finds that astonished the people who found them and left us with more questions than answers. Actually, let's not just talk about them, let's show them to you. That sounds like a far better idea, so we're going to start doing it right now. We're starting with the Roman era, and we're traveling all the way to the Roman heartland of Rome, Italy. That's where, in January 2022, this cute dog sculpture was discovered. The archaeologists responsible for the discovery have nicknamed it the Cowardly Lion because of its supposed resemblance to the character from the Wizard of Oz movie, but we think that's a little unfair. The sculpture was found in a tomb in Rome's Appio Latino neighborhood. It's somewhere between 1,900 and 2,100 years old. Archaeologists have speculated that it might have been a guardian statue left behind to watch over the dead thus explaining why its ears are pointed and it looks so alert. Researchers have come across terracotta dog sculptures like this before, but there's an interesting difference between this and previous examples that have been found elsewhere. All the other terracotta dogs have come with spouts to channel water away from the roof, but this one doesn't have any holes and wasn't a spout. Maybe someone saw one of the spouts and decided they liked the design, so they adapted it. On the other hand, perhaps the person buried in the tomb just really liked dogs. We associate crucifixion with the ancient Romans, and more specifically with the fate of Jesus Christ. It's harder to imagine crucifixions being carried out in the British Isles, but in December 2021, archaeologists in Cambridgeshire, England, discovered the first direct physical evidence of the execution method taking place there. At a site earmarked for a new housing development, the team found a 1,900-year-old skeleton with a nail driven through its heel bone. The skeleton is that of a man aged between 25 and 27, who was found buried with his arms crossed over his chest. Discoveries like this are rare because the victims of crucifixion rarely received proper burials. This particular example is even rarer because, contrary to what many people believe, Crucifixion was usually carried out using ropes instead of nails because it was easier. In fact, it's so rare that this is the first recorded hard evidence of nail-based crucifixion in Northern Europe, and only the fourth in the entire world. It's thought that the Romans used crucifixion as an execution method only for slaves, anti-Roman rebels, and those of the lower classes during their occupation of Britain so it's fair to assume that this unfortunate man came from one of those groups. There was a major archaeological breakthrough in Poland in November 2021, when archaeologists discovered what's thought to be the oldest piece of jewelry decorated by humans ever to be found in Eurasia. It's an ivory pendant, and experts think it's around 41,500 years old. The artifact is made from mammoth tusk and is covered in deliberately made puncture marks. The ancient jewelry was discovered broken in two pieces when archaeologists excavated the site deep within Poland's Stajnia cave. Experts note that the 50 puncture marks on the pendant surface are arranged in a looping curve. They're not sure whether the pattern has any significance, but they've speculated that the holes might be related to the cycles of the sun or the moon. Alternatively, perhaps each hole records a successful animal hunt. The piece comes from a time when modern humans were first beginning to adorn their bodies with jewelry. Scientists and historians have always wondered why our ancient ancestors spontaneously decided to start doing this, and while this discovery doesn't answer that question, it gets us a little closer to the origins of the behavior. The ancient Mayans, with their doomsday prophecies and advanced knowledge of astronomy, are one of the most mysterious civilizations of the ancient world, right down to the fact that they seemingly disappeared without a trace. Many people believe that the Mayans had contacts with an extraterrestrial civilization, and some of the artifacts that they left behind seem to lend weight to that belief. One of the most compelling is the Stone of the First Meeting, identified as such by an inscription on the jade slab. Upon its surface, we can clearly see a human being 
bowing in deference to a creature that looks a lot like the traditional depiction of a classic gray alien. The stone is undeniably ancient and is a genuine Mayan artifact. Similar depictions of creatures that look like this appear on other ancient Mayan artifacts, including a series of so-called stone disk UFOs, and in the artifacts of numerous other ancient civilizations all over the planet. Historians and scientists prefer to describe the figure in the carving as a depiction of a deity. But who's to say the deities that the Mayans worshipped weren't actually alien? Why is it that we so often seem to deny the truth of things that are right in front of our eyes? Shlomi Katzen is an Israeli scuba diver, but in September 2021, he accidentally became a marine archaeologist. Shlomi dived into the sea near Haifa in Israel in the hope of spotting a few tropical fish, but something far larger caught his eye. He dragged his mystery find back to the surface, which wasn't easy given its size and weight, and was shocked to see that he'd found an ancient-looking sword. Professional archaeologists quickly identified Shlomi's lucky find. This sword is about 900 years old and once belonged to a crusader knight. To be more specific, it probably belonged to a crusader knight who was stationed at the crusader citadel at Atlit, not far from Haifa. The crusader sword looks bigger than it is because of the thick coating of mud, silt, and marine life that it's acquired during its many centuries underwater. But even if all that were to be cleaned off, it would still be five feet long. Between that and the fact that the blade is made of iron, it's a wonder that anybody was able to lift it at all. The sword is thought to be fully intact underneath the crusty shell and is currently in the hands of professionals for restoration. One thing that every human being on the planet has in common is that they need to use the toilet. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have access to a toilet, though. Not everyone has a toilet today, but things are better than they were 2,700 years ago. Back then, having a sit-down toilet was a luxury enjoyed only by the rich. Here's one such 2,700-year-old luxury toilet that was found during the excavation of an ancient mansion in Jerusalem in early October 2021. Only a handful of private bathrooms of this age have ever been found in Jerusalem before. The toilet block is made out of limestone and comes with a carefully carved seat and a hole in the middle for obvious reasons. It even had a septic tank beneath it. Forty ceramic bowls were found arranged around the toilet in a circular formation. It's likely that they would have held incense or perfumes and would have been the equivalent of air fresheners. It hasn't yet been possible to prove who the mansion belonged to, but it's likely that it was one of the various kings of the Judean kingdom. When you're searching for a pair of objects, there are few things worse than only finding one of them with no sign of the other. Archaeologists in Norway experienced that frustration a few years ago when they found a single prehistoric ski on the side of a mountain. In October 2021, after years of searching, they finally found the matching ski. The gap between the discoveries was seven years. Both skis were found on the side of Mount Diggervarden, which is giving up its hidden artifacts one at a time because the snow and ice that's covered it for centuries is melting. Hunting tools, clothing, and Viking swords have also been found on the side of the mountain in recent years. The skis are roughly 1,300 years old, but the ice has done such a good job of preserving them that you could easily believe they were made within the last century. Even the foot binding of the more recently discovered ski is perfectly intact. There are signs that both skis were repaired more than once in the past, so they were likely well-loved and well-used by their owner. Whether that owner used them for hunting or merely for traveling is a matter of some conjecture. If you go to the movie theater often, you might have a favorite seat. If you regularly attend your local sports team's stadium to watch games, you might even have a season ticket and a guaranteed seat. There's nothing new about that idea. In October 2021, archaeologists searching the Roman amphitheater of Pergamon in Turkey came across blocks of private seats, engraved with the names of the people they were presumably reserved for. The blocks are inside the amphitheater's cabea, 
which is a little odd because the cavea is usually thought of as the cheaper seating section, and therefore not the place you'd expect to find private seats. The cheapness is reflected in the building materials used to make the seats, which clash with the materials around them. These may have been comparatively rich poor people rather than comparatively poor rich people, an idea backed up by the fact that the names are Latin, but written in Greek. Pergamon fell into Roman hands when King Attalus III pledged his land to Rome 2,200 years ago. The amphitheater was added during the rule of Hadrian during the second century. The story of Buddhism begins with its founder Siddhartha Gautama, but the religion didn't truly begin to flourish until a few centuries after his death. One of the reasons we can say that with confidence is because of the discovery of a Buddhist temple in Pakistan's Swat Valley in February 2022. It's one of the oldest Buddhist temples ever found, but the Buddha had still been dead for more than a century by the time it was built. The temple was built a little over 2,100 years ago, during a time when this part of Pakistan was under the control of an Indo-Greek kingdom based in northern India. The Buddha is thought to have died in the year 483 BCE, although that's by no means certain. What's left of the temple is little more than a ruin, but it's still possible to identify its ceremonial platform and stupa. There's also what might have been a cell room for monks among the ruins, along with a staircase and the floor of a public courtyard. The Swat Valley eventually became a sacred center for the religion of Buddhism, but not until about 200 years after this temple was built. Archaeologists have described our next artifact as the cake mummy, although that's an inaccurate term. There's no mummy to be seen here, but there is cake. To be more specific, it's a hazelnut cake, and it's thought to have survived the bombing of Lübeck, Germany by Allied forces in 1942. The bombing is thought to be responsible for the continued existence of the cake. It caused a firestorm which carbonized the cake so well that its original swirls and frosting are still visible. It was found inside a cellar in Lübeck's historic old town and is the only known example of food surviving the bombing. The fact it did so is a pure fluke. A cavity formed around the dessert as the house collapsed around it. It kept it safe from the fire and also prevented it from being crushed. A coffee service and documents found inside the cavity suggest that it was to be used in a confirmation ceremony scheduled for the Sunday after the bombing. We can't help but wonder what happened to the family that was supposed to come and eat it. Painting the interior walls of a burial vault feels like a fairly redundant exercise. After all, it's not like anybody's going to see them once the vault is sealed. Nevertheless, excavations at a church of Our Lady in Bruges, Belgium in September 2021 revealed the presence of two painted burial vaults from the 14th century. A third vault was also discovered, but that one was undecorated. The remains of 50 people were found in the vaults, along with the nails that once held their coffins together. The wood has long since rotted away. The most elaborately decorated of the vaults is covered in murals, most of which depict angels and scenes from the Bible, including a vividly bloody version of Calvary. The scene of the crucifixion also appears in the second vault, this time showing Christ on the cross flanked by Mary and Joseph. The quality and extent of the work are impressive, considering that back when these vaults were made, Religious laws dictated that people had to be buried within 24 hours of their passing. An underground pumping station is being built at the site of the find, so the vaults will be removed in their entirety and taken to a museum. Anything that falls into a peat bog in Ireland is likely to be preserved inside it for thousands of years. That's as true of people as it is of artifacts, but in this instance we're talking about an artifact. It's this curious wooden idol, which was pulled out of a bog in Gortnakrana, County Roscommon, in August 2021. It's human-shaped, but not so much that you'd actually call it human. It's eight feet tall for a start, and its torso is covered in precisely carved horizontal notches. Idols like this have been found in Ireland before, but never one of this size. 
After carrying out tests on the relic, archaeologists say it's around 1,600 years old and belongs to the Iron Age. They also found animal bones, human bones, weaponry, and golden objects that seem to have been thrown into the bog at roughly the same time. In all probability, that means the idol was a votive offering of some kind. As for what it represents and why it was made in the first place, that's a secret that only the Iron Age residents of Ireland know. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!